welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Green. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Holly Walsh and Russell Howard, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of Libyan leader Colonel Gaddafi in casual mode recently. <laughs> but what does LCGA stand for? First of all, is he Lionel Richie's melting wax one? <laughs> <laughs> is it little cap giant afro? <laughs> Do you think it's all, it, uh, all tucked in? Do you think yeah, it's all he literally in? has to go... <laughs> 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 is it love confuses <laughs> Gaddafi's <laughs> assassin? <laughs> But look at that little smile. How could you? <laughs> is it is it a uh, least convincing goatee award? <laughs> is it lovely cap general Armani? <laughs> is it uh, is it Leicester City's goalie arrives? <laughs> it really was an unusual transfer window when they picked up Colonel Gaddafi. Is uh, it, uh, <laughs> the uh, four things you're not allowed at the uh, party. Is it ladies, cocaine, Glaswegians, and alcohol? <laughs> is it, um... Is it... very racist. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for opening the racist door for me. Do you actually have a, a racist door? Yeah. I, 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 always, I always imagine yes, it was I more like... a children's show. Yeah, is uh, it? Like... <laughs> children, shall we open the racist door? <laughs> <laughs> Who's behind... Oh, it's Ching Chong Chinaman. <laughs> And the risk of being satirical, is it just Lockerbie cover-up, Gordon agrees? Fucking <laughs> 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 Radio 4 now, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> With your correct-sounding answer. Yeah. Is it what George Bush used to call him? <laughs> Little crazy goddamn Arab. <laughs> I know Who will be appearing actually. behind the racist Go door on. in the next edition <laughs> of, <laughs> of Frankie's Funhouse uh, on CBB? That's Did a different you, uh... show altogether. <laughs> That's my late night show. Uh... If you look at it, if you look at it really closely, happen. the answer is Leonard Cohen's great aunt. <laughs> I'm, I'm genuinely going to have to get a correct answer. <laughs> Libyan <laughs> Colonel. Oh no, Libyan celebrate Gaddafi's anniversary. It is, of course, well done, Hugh. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yes. The answer I was looking for was Libya celebrates Gaddafi anniversary. The colonel seized power of a military coup 40 years ago this week. How time flies. And the country marked the occasion with six days of extravagant and compulsory celebration. <laughs> How was it? Did you enjoy it? It was absolutely fantastic. I had a whale of a time. <laughs> <laughs> Every time the dip star <laughs> were absolutely outrageous. I would imagine that, that was top quality hummus, all right. Yeah. 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 It was fantastic. They compared it, didn't they? They've, he said that it would be a celebration on the same lines or, or even better than Beijing. 2008, didn't they? And the reason he said that was because apparently, as well as fireworks and stuff, they've got the world's biggest tent. Yeah. That was the major, which isn't even true. The biggest tent in the world is the one Vanessa Feltz uses when she goes to Glastonbury. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> a friend of mine. Nothing <laughs> <laughs> new. It's the world's biggest tent, though. It would have taken an absolute arse ache to put it up, wouldn't it? Do you think they just spent ages? Andy, got... you're putting your tents up wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the whole <laughs> They had the Italian red arrows at it. That, mm. To me, all the red arrows are just cowards, aren't they? Highly skilled pilots who, while we're at war, choose to perform at country air shows. <laughs> Have you seen any action recently? Yes, Farnborough. I killed a family having a picnic. <laughs> During the actual ceremony, the ceremony of the usual stuff, there was dancers, and then there was like a big eye for no properly explained reason, and people would walk into the big <laughs> eye. Oh, Instead of going into the party, you should see where they're coming out, it's yeah. really gross. <laughs> <laughs> and then, as well as that, there was this weird kind of motif, which was mm. they commemorated the hanging of Libyan patriots by <laughs> the Italians, right? Do you know what you can't see just out of that shot? The relatives of those people are desperately trying to guess the letters of a huge word. <laughs> A miniature looks... of that as an executive toy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just <make> it back. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like Libya forgot about Gaddafi's 40th anniversary and had to pick up a stage show on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Quick, go to the garage. We need a massive international stage show. <laughs> I've got an eye. What does that represent? <laughs> you know, uh, looking at things for 40 years. Good work, good work. <laughs> good work, because this obviously is what Gaddafi looks like these days. <laughs> yeah, which is, yeah. let's face it, quite <laughs> rock and roll. In yeah. fact, it's, it's exceptionally rock and roll when you see who he most resembles in the world. 
which is Tom Jones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, you couldn't just pick... You pick any photograph of Gaddafi. Look, in a hat, but not this. Oh, my God, it's Tom Jones. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. It's Tom Jones. Who was that? Who attended, by the way? Well, no one, really. There, there was one world leader who came, didn't he, in the morning, that was Berlusconi. Berlusconi accepted the invitation when he heard that Jordan was going, um, although he left early when he found out it was the country. Because <laughs> 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 it's always going to be a different party once Berlusconi goes, mm. you know, you're like, oh, cancel the cat-headed women, send someone out to buy Boggle and Scattergus. <laughs> They had, one, they had one Western leader uh, at it, and that was because, like, Mugabe and various people arrived, but they also had, excitingly, the President George Abella of Malta and his wife, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Which just sounds like the most... Like, they drove there with a caravan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I know. Traffic run a bitch. Traffic run a bitch coming over. Oh, all, all the way through, got hot in it hot. Oh, it's it hot. <laughs> oh, these sheep's ass don't, don't, don't agree with me. Uh, <laughs> weren't they, that Al McGraw was actually going to show up. And it's a six-day festival, and Gaddafi is a maverick. There were loads of pictures of Al McGraw, he weren't there? They were. And you're thinking at some stage, not only will there be all the Scottish flags flying again, but you quite expect Gaddafi to wear a Celtic scarf, have a little kilt, be <laughs> eating porridge oats, <laughs> watching somebody toss the caber, <laughs> going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Can you excuse me while I just lock the racist door? <laughs> I say, it's good to see. It's good to see McGrath's taking the Scottish lifestyle back with him, though. He's living in a tent and taking morphine every day. <laughs> I think you know people say it's gone bad diplomatically, but it's gone not that bad considering it's Scottish people trying to do diplomacy. <laughs> it's gone quite well. The average Scottish person's idea of diplomacy is going, "You're a," <laughs> but it's okay. I like. <laughs> <laughs> There's a strange thing, isn't there, with Al McGrahy, where there's this defence of compassion, like you're now allowed to commit a crime, providing that there's something wrong with you. Sorry, I pissed in your coffee. I've got asthma. <laughs> <laughs> what is the recent news about Britain's population? Oh, there's loads of us. There's loads! There's loads! <laughs> it's, it's now gone up to 61, 61 million. million. Now, this was, reported, this was reported by The Independent, uh, yep. for example, during the week, with baby boom drives British population to record high. Yep. Whereas yep. The Sun said, Randy Couples <laughs> pushed population to 61 million. You know and brilliantly, The Daily Mail said, an immigrant baby boom has... <laughs> Britain's fastest population growth in half a century. It sounds like there's an agenda in place. What was lovely, <laughs> what was lovely as well was the links, because the Independent and the Mail all had links to how population's going to affect us in the future. The Sun had a link from that news story that said, 11 million people have had sex in their car. Are you one of them? <laughs> I read about this story. Uh, I read about this story originally on the, on the Daily Mail website, and uh, it made a big thing about the immigra immigrants. And then it said uh, the average woman in Britain now has 1.9 children. And I thought, who are, who are all these 0.9 people? <laughs> and then I read the comments underneath, and uh, <laughs> 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 there they were. Hello. <laughs> what we need to do, I think, is uh, put teenagers off sex, and I am the very man for that job. <laughs> You know the way they send a prisoner round sometimes to tell kids in school that crime isn't going to be good for them? <laughs> they should send me round to show them what sex is like in a long-term relationship. <laughs> and for realism, in the middle of it, my two-year-old son walks in and tells us, that, tells us both that he needs a poo. <laughs> Hang on. Hang on. Yeah. Hang on one second. Oh, I've just got you can up. lock the racist door, but you can't <laughs> lock the bedroom door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, BNP, they got very excited by the, uh, the baby boom statistics, didn't they? And you know, like Jerry Adams used to, when he was on the news, they always had to dub his voice, didn't yeah. they? I think for the BNP, whenever Nick Griffin's on the news, they should dub his voice with the voice of Joe Pasquale. <laughs> 
I think it'd be funny if it was Mr. T. Sorry. It was, yeah, I was going to say, or, or like a Jamaican. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> in a patois. Yeah, the B -M -B -M -P here. The BMP here. Trying to steal my jobs and ting. <laughs> <laughs> When he, uh, steel drums in the background, <laughs> ding 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 Does anyone hear a creaking door? <laughs> um, we need to do some serious things to tackle the population problem, right? First of all, we should get Fiona Bruce during Antiques Roadshow to every 30 seconds go, BOO! <laughs> and secondly, we need a security firm patrolling Kerry Katona's vagina 24-7. <laughs> OK, at the end of, uh, At the end of that round, the points go to Russell, Holly and Andy. <laughs> now we play a round called Colonel Gagafi. This game involves Holly, Stuart, Andy and Russell, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is where we test our performance stand-up skills. We spin our news generator, it settles on a topic, and anyone can volunteer jokes about the chosen subject. The winners are the people I judge who produce the funniest stuff. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. The first subject is international relations. Who wants to come in on that? Andy Parsons. <laughs> now, the new head of the Tamil Tigers, he's been arrested by Sri Lanka. Now, I always think uh, the Tamil Tigers, they don't really sound like a terrorist group, do they? I always think they sound more like a rugby league team. <laughs> it seems that even the terrorists are resorting to marketing techniques to try and get more members. Are we soon going to have the Al-Qaeda rhinos? <laughs> Will it be the Israeli Broncos against the Hamas Cowboys? <laughs> Maybe it's not even the real IRA. Maybe it's Real IRA. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andy Parsons. OK, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is dating. Who wants to come in on that? Holly. My favourite way of meeting people at the moment is this thing called Close Encounters or I Seek You. You might have seen this as the people who text into the free newspapers and they go things like, I was the girl in the grey jacket. You were the guy reading the book on the train. Call me. Have you seen these? I saw one the other day that said, I was the guy in the skin tight orange vest top. You were the girl pointing and laughing. Call me. <laughs> I was the guy in the tweed jumpsuit. You were any woman. Call me. <laughs> My friend works for the only newspaper in Guernsey and she said they tried to run one of those I Seek You columns but they had to drop it after a week because it was like, oh, it's the guy in the white apron and everyone's reading and going, oh, that'll be Dave. <laughs> There's only seven people on this island, you stalker. <laughs> Thank you very much, Holly. OK, that leaves it with Stuart and Russell. Let's spin the wheel. The next topic is the Consumer Society. Russell. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's all a bit much, isn't it? I went into a shop the other day that said, why not try a guilt-free wrap? You're like, don't make sandwiches evil. <laughs> sandwiches are lovely. The bacon sandwich, one of the loveliest thing in the world. What is this, a bacon sandwich? Essentially, it's bread giving a dead pig a cuddle. It's a lovely <laughs> thing. I love you, Mr. Pig. Why do the Jews hate me? It's not... <laughs> really down about it and then I saw this wonderful thing that I think could only happen in the West Country. The bloke behind the counter in this shop yawned. The bloke in front of him who did not know him popped his finger in his mouth <laughs> and went, ooh, yawn rape, and I nearly died. <laughs> I, had, I had never seen a yawn rape. And now you've learned about it, you can't not do it. You'll be on a bus, you'll see an old oh, yawn rape, you can't help. <laughs> Did the bloke behind the counter headbutt him? No, he didn't. The bloke behind the counter giggled and went, it's a good job I didn't fart, wasn't it? And you're sat there going, well, the world is a better place. Thank you very much, Russell. <laughs> OK, Stuart, let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. The next topic is health. <laughs> oh, that was a long walk. <laughs> <laughs> OK, health. Money, money-wise, I'm set for life, provided I die next Tuesday. <laughs> Ladies, I wasn't circumcised, I was circumnavigated. <laughs> Just because I have arthritis doesn't mean I can't live a normal whole.
I'm a paranoid schizophrenic, but you know what they say. <laughs> Unfortunately for agrophobics, the cure is just around the corner. <laughs> My manic depressive buddy was attacked by a bipolar bear. <laughs> My therapist says I have a preoccupation with vengeance. We'll see about that. <laughs> My neighbor's in the Guinness Book of Records. He's had 43 concussions. He lives very close. In fact, just a stone's throw away, but the point. <laughs> To your health, my friends. At the end of that round, the points go to Sherman and Holly. <laughs> Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories? Holly, which category would you like? Media. media. OK, media it is. The answer is 200 hours. What is the question? Is it, uh, what amount of drinking can the average Scot fit into a happy hour? <laughs> if an MP spent an hour travelling to work, how much would they actually claim for? <laughs> Is it over an infinite amount of time, an infinite number of monkeys would eventually write the complete works of Shakespeare, how long would it take two monkeys to write Hollyoaks? <laughs> When captured, when captured, is it the amount of time the Scottish government thinks Osama bin Laden should serve? <laughs> is it? Is it? <laughs> where? Is it how long can Peter Mandelson lie motionless without breathing? <laughs> is it how long did it take Heather Mills to complete Celebrity Total Wipeout? Yeah. <laughs> At what point does masturbation become self-harm? <laughs> Is it how long does Adrian Childs spend in makeup before the makeup lady says, Fuck it, there's nothing else I can do! <laughs> I, look, I look forward to having explained that joke next time I'm plugging a DVD. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, One of the actual answers it's how many hours Child 4 have to find because they're axing Big Brother. That's exactly right. Well done, Russell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The question I was looking for was how many hours of their prime time schedule will Channel 4 have to fill after cancelling Big Brother? This is a story that the broadcasters announced the cancellation of the long running reality show. Big Brother will now run only until 2010. Why has the show been cancelled? Ratings, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's the in. lowest ratings. It's gone down to 2 million. It was at 13 million. But I think they should never have had different series anyway. They should have just kept the first lot in there for. <laughs> <laughs> For a decade, that would just be great. See, well, just to see how long it takes them to eat each other. I think that's the one. <laughs> it's it's just not too predictable, hasn't it? I mean, I've not seen any of this, Big Brother. I've not even read about it in the paper. But I can say with confidence that the gay one's a bit annoying, the lesbian's a bit bossy, it's a shame for the one with special needs, and the racist one stands a good chance of winning. <laughs> The thing that it, it did change, it changed the language of television, Big Brother, in many, many ways. I mean, it, there was the voting people out and tasks and the secondary programme, that's the big thing that they did, which not enough shows do. I for, would love to hear at the end of Newsnight where they go, for more on this story, why don't we go over to BBC Three and see who's joining Paxo in the Newsnight jacuzzi? I think it's a shame that it's gone because, uh, you know, now if you want to watch a room of strangers sleeping, you have to do it the old fashioned way with a ladder. <laughs> yeah. I would like brothers a little bit like when it's on telly, it's a little bit like, you know when you see a dog just rubbing its arse on carpet? <laughs> it's a bit like that, you just watch it, don't you? You kind of <laughs> watch that for five minutes and then you go, what have I been doing for five minutes? <laughs> and the dog seems to look at you and go, you know what you've been doing. <laughs> Because everyone's going, are they going to replace it with drama? Are they going to replace it with uh, big documentaries? And you're like, no, everybody in Channel 4 is in a big room right now and every sentence they say ends with crossed with skins. <laughs> yeah. Let's do cash in the attic. <laughs> crossed with skins. <laughs> Let's call it gash in the attic. <laughs> Channel 4, if you're watching, my show that I propose to you is ready to roll out right now. Robot whores. <laughs> And son teams build robot prostitutes in their sheds. Obviously, Craig Charles is still the presenter. <laughs> Sergeant Bash looks very different. <laughs> you know the news, what scandals rocked the world of rugby oh, recently? There's a thing this called Bloodgate. Yeah, this is the story of a rugby player who basically has faked 
a blood injury so as he could get substituted. Yes, he Tom was, Williams is He was the worst actor in the world. There's footage of him, and he basically took a, a blood capsule out of his sock, put it in his mouth, right, fell over very dramatically, and then as he was being carried off the pitch, winked so as the TV cameras could actually see it. <laughs> He's been banned for four months, but on the plus side, he has got a part in the opening sequence of Casualty. <laughs> <laughs> It would have been a lot better if he'd hidden it up his arse <laughs> and just come out of the scrum like that. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you dirty bastards! <laughs> he, got the, he got the blood capsules. They came from a joke shop, I think, didn't they? Yeah. That'd be fantastic if everybody did that. If, uh, you know, Eduardo goes down in the penalty area, you'll get a lot more sympathy if he comes up with an arrow sticking through his head. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how they invented rugby? Do you know how they invented, you know the famous story, as a wee boy at rugby school, <laughs> Pick picked up a, up a football yeah. and his friends joined in. Yeah. And, and do you know the irony is that if his friends had beaten the shit out of him, <laughs> they'd still have invented rugby. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not even particularly look at him, for God's sake. He looks at him of Dawn of the Dead. Uh, he's gone too far uh, with that. Like, he should be hanging at a shopping centre while seven survivors would thought of shot. Like, he, he's like, oh, no, oh, no, there's an undead on the field for Harlequins. Uh, clear the pitch, remember the so undead is here. They do a thing called cutting and stitching. Um, so, basically, what happens, uh, before the game, they cut you and then they stitch you up and then if they're losing, they, they get you to open the stitches up in the middle of the game. That would basically mean you're pretty rubbish at rugby, innit? If they go around and go, Johnny, make sure you throw it. You, Steve, make sure you kick it. Russell, we're going to cut you. <laughs> in, case, in case we're losing, we need you to pick the stick. The thing is, it's like your wound, cos you can't catch the ball or do the kicky with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're just good for bleeding, yeah, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Two here uh, congeals the worst. Uh, I, think uh, <laughs> I think it's absolutely despicable. You'd never have this happening back in Canada. I defy you to name one Canadian athlete who's cheated. <laughs> <laughs> is it a sport? It sort of seems to be men with no teeth fighting. <laughs> it's like something we invented so that fat public schoolboys could have something to do when they weren't punching each other at a wedding reception. Well, <laughs> apparently the game, apparently the game works. I'm not a rugby man to go to rugby school. Apparently the game works at the school level because there's a job for everyone in the class. As in the, the kid who's fast can go in the wing and the fat short kid can go in the front. It's real like Bash Street kids. Everyone has something to do. So and the kid who likes using scalpels to cut the stitches. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, like, there being a position for everybody in the class, I love the fact that, at last, there's something for emo kids and goths who've been cutting themselves for years. They're like, get out there! <laughs> <laughs> we can do with you on the team! Uh, <laughs> Harley Quinn's is a really odd name for a rugby. It sounds like it should be a soft scent of box of chocolates or something <laughs> like that. What is it, Harley? A spirit of mischief from the Commedia dell'arte? That... Good God! <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't, see, it doesn't scream rugby, really, does it? Yeah. You know, no, I'm like, well, it oh. probably would if you squeezed it hard enough. Rugby! <laughs> 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 Are you mistreating that harlequin again, Dennis? Yes! <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, at the end of that round, <laughs> boys, go to Frankie Hughes, Gerard! Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes. We'd like to see this for everyone, so if you can make your way to the performance area, please. Mm. I caught ideas for scenarios we don't see <laughs> and performers put <laughs> their suggestions. <laughs> OK, here we go. The first subject is... Rejected questions from this year's exams. What colour does a Smurf go when we choke it? <laughs> Translate the following into German. Two world wars and one world cup. Do-da, do-da. <laughs> How many pepperami big boys could you feed to Victoria Beckham through a tube before she became visible to the human eye? <laughs> <laughs> what is the name of the force that pulls objects towards the centre of the Earth? Is it A, gravity, or B, magic? <laughs> <laughs> Katie Price is supposedly worth eight and a half million pounds and has got a thriving TV career. Explain. <laughs> if George Michael leaves at 8 o'clock for a five-mile drive, when does he crash? <laughs> there are six lines of equal length. How long will Kerry Katona be in the bathroom? <laughs> if a train is going at 70 miles per hour, how surprised would you be? 
That is amnesia. Is it A, memory loss, A, memory loss, <laughs> or 4, the Battle of Hastings? <laughs> If Sally buys three oranges and two apples, how far south of Scotland is she? <laughs> Discuss the idea that Willy Wonka was a paedophile. <laughs> What is amnesia? Is it A, <laughs> memory loss? Draw a diagram of the male genitalia. Please use the tracing paper provided. <laughs> what are most Canadians renowned for saying? A. Yeah. <laughs> Is standards declining? <laughs> Hitler, Pol Pot, Genghis Khan. Shag, marry or kill? <laughs> There's a wedding where Jane invites 20 guests and her partner Helen invites 40 guests. How angry is God? <laughs> <laughs> the next topic is unlikely things to hear on a TV business show. Well, the FTSE has had its best day since March. He went shopping, had lunch with friends and took in a show before shagging a complete stranger it met in a bar. <laughs> Our invention lets you know whether or not a girl fancies you. We call it beer. <laughs> OK, Dragons, I've developed a system that lets you get your own seat on the bus, and it involves talking slightly too loudly and pitting yourself! <laughs> This morning, I'm asking for half a million pounds. And with that, I will buy half a million lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Dragon. Oh, jeez, what the hell is that? That's Evan Davis, the host? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> OK, we may have lost some money promoting Michael Jackson 02, but let's face it, I've just signed a deal for the new Oasis tour. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Working Lunch, a show for people who are so good at business, they're sat at home watching the TV <laughs> in the middle of the fucking day. <laughs> Dragons, I have three words for you. Reggae, reggae condoms. <laughs> The last task was easy, and yet you cocked it up. I only asked you to blow the bloody doors up. <laughs> this week, the dragons meet a retired Nigerian brigadier with an offer that sounds too good to be true. <laughs> Today, there was a hard drop on the footsie, and I got a bruisey on my handy wandy. <laughs> This week, the apprentices face their toughest task ever, selling the shite Sir Alan actually makes. <laughs> OK, Jim, that round, the point's going to Frankie Hughes, Stewart. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Holly Walsh and Russell Howard. Commiserations of Frankie Boy, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. For festival highlights from Reading and Leeds, you can catch all the best bits by pressing the red button now. And how did we ever cook, clean or decorate without being shown how to by the TV expert? The funny side of them is next.